Good Wednesday morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. And I hope that in spite of this very rainy weather that you are having a great morning this morning as uh, we jump into our time with uh, the Word of God in Colossians chapter 2. And uh, remember what we've been talking about is this mystery that has been revealed to the saints. And that mystery, of course, is the gospel. The fact that Jesus came to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. And all who will believe in him and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord shall be saved. That's what the word of God says. And the mystery is that God wanted to bring all people together into one new man. Uh, the, the body of Christ called the church, and that's Jews and Gentiles alike. And as we come to chapter 2, we begin to see a little bit more of Paul's missionary heart. You know, I think there there's a thing called a pastor's heart. I have a pastor's heart. I'm constantly concerned for my people, praying for my people that God has placed in my care because that's my calling. I'm not a missionary. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a, a, a prophet. I'm a pastor. And God has placed that on my heart to where I want to minister to the people here at First Baptist Church of, of Dadeville. Paul has a missionary heart. And his missionary heart is a concern for all people everywhere that they would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. And here's the neat thing about Colossians chapter 2. Paul reveals that he's never met these people. He's never met the, the, the people in Colossae or Laodicea. Look at what he says. He says, For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. They've never met. Paul had never traveled to, to Colossae. And so in this particular situation, he has heard from Epaphroditus uh, about this church and what's going on in this church. And he's trying to minister to them and set up a time where maybe in the future he can come and, and visit with them and teach them. Because this is what's on his heart. Listen to this. He says that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, we may have to spend a couple of days on this one, but I want you to see something here. His desire, his concern for them had to do with the fact that they need to be encouraged. Now, I think everybody needs encouragement from time to time. Pastors need it. Missionaries need it. Uh, all of us who, who are believers need encouragement from time to time. We know that God is on the throne of heaven. We know that he's sovereign. We know that he loves us. But sometimes our circumstances weigh heavy on us and we need to be encouraged. Now, imagine this. Imagine that every time that you uh, prayed, you had to be concerned if someone heard you pray because it was against the law to pray. And so you could be thrown into prison or even worse, put to death. What if every time you went to worship, you were afraid that someone was going to break down the doors and, and, and kill you or haul you away? Well, that's what was going on with these Colossian Christians. They were living in a time of great persecution where it was dangerous to be a Christian. And so you could imagine how much they needed encouragement. It would be so easy It'd be so easy for them to go back to the old way of life, to renounce their faith in Christ and to say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I want to fit in. I want to be a part of my family. I want to be a part of this culture. I want to, to go back to life as, as normal. It'd be so easy for them to do that. But the spirit within them would, would constantly cry out and say, no, hang on, stand firm. And Paul says, I want to encourage you in that, that your hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love. Now, I want you to see this because this is important. The way that we are encouraged as believers, whether we're facing persecution or living in the church in America, the way that we're encouraged is when the body of Christ is knit together in love. Knit together in love. We're talking about unity. We're talking about one accord. We're talking about a kind of harmony that comes when brothers and sisters in Christ love each other, want what's best for each other, concern for each other, and come together to take care of those kinds uh, of needs that, that people have. That's how we're encouraged. That's why it's so important for us to be a part of the body of Christ. That's why it's so important for us to come together 
to, to worship in the, in the church because it is in that worship that we find that encouragement. Look, there are people that you love dearly. And if you love them dearly, you want to be around them. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, I have a literal hunger to be with my, my children and my grandchildren. I want to see them all the time. And, and there's so much joy that comes when, when we're together. The same is true with the body of Christ. I can't wait to gather with the body of Christ on Wednesday night, tonight. I can't wait to gather with our, our church on Sunday morning because there's just something special that happens as we come together. And that's part of what Paul's talking about, being encouraged. And the way that we do that is if we're knit together in love. Now, we'll talk about the rest of this tomorrow, but keep this in mind. It is so vitally important that you find your encouragement in the right places. And the right place is with brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you have a great day today. I'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless.